Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Make sure you like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. And leave that donation for that fried rice and chicken wings. Now listen, man. Fans are ready to boycott Shakir Stevenson, the boxer runner, if he fights a UK fighter. Man, listen, I'm going to say this. And I'm going to say it emphatically, right? Shakir Stevenson is an outstanding fighter. And if he has to run in that ring to get the decision or to avoid taking unnecessary punishment, cut him some slack. Because almost every fighter that we see when they get in the ring, most, right, there comes times where they choose not to engage. There are others who choose not to engage as much, especially when they know they have a real threat in front of them. There's others who know how to handle that. But then there are others who they don't try to disengage at all. They write in the goddamn firefight, mash up, crash up. But for Shakir, Shakir Stevenson, the whole objective, man, is to hit opponents and not get hit to use your feet and use your legs to get out the way. So that being said, he's a boxer, boxer runner if he has to. And I'm not here slighting the man or trying to make fun of him. What I'm telling you is that's what he said. Whatever it takes to win a fight. But what's happening with Shakir Stevenson right now, right? This is where fans are about to turn on his ass. One is he's he's letting the damn fans get to him. He can say he's not. It's getting to him because he's talking about it. Okay? It's getting to him. He he wants for people to 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 praise him and and and, and champion his name. Look, we know you that you've won a title in three divisions. But people just they're just not gonna get behind that, man. And um that performance against Edwin De Los Santos, that that hurt him. And then to come back and have a fight with the guy from Canada. Um, and, and that guy, no, it was Haratunian. Haratunian, man, was, was there to fight. And even Shakir said in the first few rounds, he was like, what the hell? You see what I'm saying? And then he did start walking him down. He was trying to get him out of there. But the other thing with Shakir Stevenson is obviously he doesn't quite have the pop that he, I think he would like to have to be able to get in the ring and tranquilize opponents. That being said, he had that, what, like a two, three week, three week run, a whole month, I think it was a month, whatever, after that fight with the uh, Haratunian, right? After that fight, he was out here talking a lot of trash, being very aggressive to people because he can say what he wants. That shit bothered him with all the boxing fans converged on him and started bullying him, right? But th this is the thing with, with Shakir Stevenson, right? I'm about to t tell y'all about this thing with, with Tank, huh? Um, and that fight with that guy. What was I about to tell you? I lost my train of thought. But anyway, I'm going to keep it going. Oh, I know what it is. What happened is he... he, he I think he is now looking to to say, you know what? I want, he, oh, he was talking trash. He was talking all that trash, right? To where I think he was like, you know what? I want to fight Tank. I want to fight Lomachenko. I'll fight anybody because those emotions overwhelmed him. And fans were like, yeah, this is what we want. So then there was a stuff like, give me Zapata, you know, De La Hoya was talking like he wanted to pay the thing. He was talking like he didn't want to give Shakir. Has to pay to fight Shakir. Uh, you listen to Pitbull say, hey, I'll, Shakir's boring. I'll never fight him. But Shakir's like, yeah, they don't want to fight me. I'll fight him. Yeah, I'll fight Tank. Send me the contract. Everyone's getting excited, right? Oh, yeah, this is what we want to see. Shakir Stevenson, he's going to come out here and fight a real threat. He's going to come out here, and now we're going to see. Is he just a boxer runner? Or is he really that fighter that we think he can be because obviously Chris Stevenson's got, not going to take unnecessary risk. And, you know, Terrence Crawford will tell you, man, you know, 
Forget these fans. And they're not the ones that got to feed your family. Just get in there, do what you do, and win. You can't sad, you can't please all the fans. Just get in there and win. But what happened, right? Because Shakir Stevenson no longer with top rank, kind of in the breeze. He's trying to go independent. Now, can he do it? Yes. Will he be successful? I don't know. We got to wait and see. But you can see Eddie Hearn and Shakir Stevenson had to have something brewing. But what is going on, right, is Shakir Stevenson is now with Eddie Hearn. So he got all the fans worked up thinking that, oh, man, Shakir Stevenson is about to come out here, maybe fight Tank, go after Loma, fight Zapata, right? I, I did video. I said, I think Zapata would beat him. I think Zapata would just overwhelm him, right? But Eddie Hearn's in the mix now. So now fans are like, uh oh, what's this talk about Shakir fighting a guy named Cordina? Now, if you don't know, Cordina just fought. Um, against Kakasi in Saudi Arabia a few months ago. And Kakasi put the bing bings on Cordina. It was back and forth, but Kakasi was just beating the shit out of him. He was hitting him with some hard shots. Cordina just couldn't get out of the way of it. So now uh, boxing fans are up on that. They're like, oh, you're going to fight this guy. But that's Eddie Hearn people. So what, what I see happening here is Shakir Stevenson may plan to just have a fight. To, to, to get active, to try to help with his confidence, uh, someone who he should be able to get in there and maybe tranquilize. And then after this, end of this year, then early next year, maybe take on a Zapata. Uh, maybe look for a tank fight. Maybe go up to 140 and fight a Haney or something like that. I think, that, I, I think this is a, a kind of springboard fight uh, with working with Eddie Hearn and Turkey al -Sheik. Well, Shakir makes some good money, but two, he gets active. Uh, three, Eddie Hearn gets to check a box and give one of his guys a big fight. And four, then Shakir Stevenson can now come and launch himself into negotiations with one of these guys who've been making more money than him. Because Turkey al should should handsomely compensate him. He should get the win, and then I think that's going to just roll into an announcement that Eddie Hearn is working with Shakir Stevenson. Uh, why they haven't come out and announced it yet, I don't know. But to me, you can look and see that things are going that direction. Now, th this is this is the issue. The things Shakir Stevenson and fans said about Tank. He fought nobody's. Look at his resume. He's just out here chasing money. He's not chasing greatness. He's not chasing legacy, right? There's a lot of people who don't give Tank any credit. Shakir Stevenson... He gives Tank credit as a fighter, but when he talk about who he's fought, he you know he kind of came a little hard at Tank. But if but for Shakir Stevens to come fight this guy Cordina, if that takes place, all these fans are ready to boycott Shakir. They're like, oh okay, so the same stuff you were saying about everybody else, right? You're supposed to be Al Capone. You're supposed to be the most talented, best fighter, pound for pound. All this shit is how you feel about yourself, okay, Al Capone? Why are you not going all the way? Why are you going fighting this UK fighter who just got tranquilized out there in Saudi Arabia? Why are you fighting him? See, nobody really want to understand that Eddie Hearn behind that. Nobody really want to understand that this ain't nothing but a Terrence Crawford, a Vanessean type fight, which is just going to, which just helped to springboard Crawford into the Earl Spence fight. That's all this is for uh, Shakir Stevenson. This is a Crawford, a Vanessean fight. Springboard Crawford to a the big fight with Spence. This is going to springboard spring Shakir to a big fight with Cepeda, maybe Tank, or whoever. But nobody's going to want to understand that. And that's Eddie Hearn. But that, that's why, man, I tell you, people need to learn how to listen more and talk less. Because Shakir Stevenson out here on Twitter, he said all kind of stuff. He now has someone, an Eddie Hearn, who's going to sit there, man, and is going to say, look, don't worry about all these people. Let's get you the fights that's going to help to continue. You know, Eddie Hearn's always talking about building somebody's profile. Help to continue to build your profile, right? Get you over there in Saudi Arabia, get you a good payday. And then now we can look to maybe, depending on how you feel, get you into those tank fights or those are paid to fight. Eddie Hearn ain't dumb. Eddie Hearn will know his guy is going to lose and will still talk like his guy is going to win. But Eddie Hearn knows. Like with Marjumov, I could see where he... He felt Majumov had a chance, but he knew Terrence Crawford had something. He's proven. 
But we all saw after that fight that, yeah, Marjamoff and Crawford are different animals. You know what I'm saying? But even Eddie Hearn, he he was talking, yeah, Marjamoff this, and you're going to see. But deep down, you could he, he, he was emitting a vibe of insecurity, of, you know what I'm saying? Insecurity of, of a little bit of uncertainty. You know what I'm saying? And if he comes out here trying to promote Shakir Stevenson about that fight with uh, Zapata, he's going to say, Shakir Stevenson, he's a outstanding, he's this, he's that. Masterful, masterclass type performances, boxer, boom, bing, all this shit. But he knows deep down that ain't that fight ain't easy. You know what I'm saying? So he's gonna promote him just like he did Marjamar from Crawford, but he knows what the hell Zapata brings to the table. That being said, Eddie Hearn ain't trying to push him for those fights right now. If Eddie Hearn's gonna work with him, he's not gonna do that. He's going to say, nope, let's build your profile up, get you some more wins, big wins, get, to, get you active two, three fights in a year, and then now we may be ready. But who knows? I think I think he'll give him this one fight, and if he, he may early next year look for the big fight. Eddie Hearn's all about big fights, and if they work with Turkey al Sheik, Turkey al Sheik wants big fights. Turkey al Sheik's not looking to just give you handouts. Turkey al Sheik does not care. He wants the big fights, whatever, and he understands the sport of boxing. And that's one thing about Shakir Stevenson. He better be careful. Out there looking like Ammo Williams, Ray Ford. Out there looking like Deontay Water. Better be careful. They put you on the fight cards. Because Turkey al he ain't out here, man, uh, coddling anyone. That's why he told him. You saw that uh, Terrence Crawford, the Terrence Crawford Marjorie fight. He, uh, Shakir sitting there next to Turkey al What What uh, a... The turkey, the angry bird, say, you need to let me know now. Letting that man know what we're doing. Because Turkey al Sheik's all about closing deals within, you know, record time. And I, I think that conversation, I don't know this, just a conversation. So I don't need nobody saying, screw you, hit champion, you're just making assumptions. Yeah, that's what we do here. We make assumptions, we speculate, um, we predict, and that drives the dialogue. Okay. But I think that's what that was. Like, yo, I need to know what's up. So he can try to get Shakir on that fight card. Um, I just think Shakir should be careful what he's doing. I think he had a good thing going over there at Bob Aaron. I understand the importance of break locking with your comfort zone. Um, and good things will happen. But I also know the importance of when you stay within your comfort zone. Uh, well, I say when you get out of it, maybe great things can happen. But when you're in it, good things happen. And it's okay to just have good things happen. It's like me being in the military for 25 years. Good things happen. Then some great things happen, but it was more good. Then I retired, and great things started happening. But all that good got me to the point where I, me and my kid, nobody had to do shit. And for Chris Stevens, I think he needs to understand the significance of just being in a good situation instead of going and chasing that great situation. That's what shit can backfire. That being said, fans will boycott him if he fights Cordina. They ain't going to care and try to understand what Eddie Hearn's trying to do with him. They're not going to care. They're just going to see, okay, now he out here fighting tomato cans. Oh, he's scared. He got in some hard fights. Harrington, um, Edwin De Los Santos, he's stuck in tank. He's stuck in Haney now. Yeah, he's scared. That's all they're going to say. They don't, these fans ain't trying to understand anything. I understand. I think it's smart, you know. Don't go out there and get yourself, you know, don't go out there and lose. Sit there, man, and keep getting your way, stacking up your dough, building your profile and make those fights even bigger. But you talk so much shit, and now you're back in the corner. You got to come out swinging, my man. Not come out, you know, dropping to your hands and knees and begging for forgiveness. No, motherfucker, come out and fight. Same way you was fighting with your mouth with all them words and them fingers on Twitter. Come on out and fight. Don't come out here, man, tuck your tail between your legs, not fight. And if he doesn't do that, fans are going to rip his ass. He, he think he had a tough time coming off of that Heratonian fight. He think he had a hard time. Boy, let them announce that he's fighting Cordina. Oh, Lord have mercy, man. Nobody going to hold their horses. They're going to take it to the stupid on him. And I, I hope he's ready for that. And I hope Eddie Hearn's ready to... Get that man a, a shoulder to cry on, cause Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn got the patience for that bullshit. And be like, look, grow up, put 
put on, put on your big boy pants. Shut up. Get over it. But Shakira Stevenson is an emotional cat. And I, I think that's what Eddie Hearn's going to get tired of hearing this dude complain and cry and whine. He, Eddie Hearn likes to have a little bit of back and forth, and he likes to have um, fighters out there engaging with fans, whether good or bad. He likes to help, think it helps to promote them and build their profile. But he also thinks that, you know, you can go overboard. And with the social media shit, these fight, I, I think Shakira Stevenson and Clarissa Shields, they go overboard. Caleb Plant's pretty active, but Shakira Stevenson and Clarissa Shields, they go overboard with this shit. I think Eddie Hearn's going to tighten that up, which he should, because that's what I would tell him. If, he, if, if I ever had a chance to talk to him and he would listen, I would tell him the same thing I've been telling people for years, even before I retired. The most important thing I learned is, 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 is two things. One, listen a whole lot and shut the fuck up. Or like I like to say it in a, in, a, in, a, in a nice way, listen a whole lot, talk very little, right? The other thing was playing your card right, acronym that I created. C for communication, verbal and written, and understanding the importance of nonverbals. A for attitude, R, reliable, um, responsible. So it's reliable, responsible, and respect, right? And then D was discipline, doing the things you don't want to do like you love it. If you can play your card right and listen a whole lot, talk very little, you go real far in life. That's what I would tell Shakir Stevenson. Anyway, y'all keep cool. Shout out to the veterans all seven continents. Fans ready to boycott them. He better be ready because they're going to be coming for his ass. No ditty. In the breeze.